From sunny Southern California, this is the Executive Housekeeper 101 from housekeepingrehab.com. Here now is your Executive Housekeeper, Abel Josephson. Ding dong with an X, you're back. Good to see you. I'm so glad you came back. This is perfect, the Executive Housekeeper 101. It is perfect for the first time executive housekeeper, for the first time housekeeping manager. And straight up, I want to define what the word clean means. People say, well, this room is, is vacant and clean. This room is clean and inspected. What does that mean, clean? It doesn't mean exactly what you think it means. The first thing that comes to mind is somebody's gone in and <laughs> spray and wipe. No, some people think that clean means that we have vacuumed, we have dusted. No, that's not what clean means. Oh, that's cleaning, but that's not what clean means in the perception, in the eyes of the guest. We have to put ourselves in their shoes. We have to put ourselves in their eyes. Everything we do is seen from the guest's point of view but not their natural eyes, not their natural ears, not their natural feelings, not their five senses, their internal antenna. They know something in their knower that we don't always look after. I'm gonna talk about that when I define what clean is. C-L-E-A-N, C-L-E-A-N, clean. What is clean? Let me define it for you. Clean is the absence of any evidence that anybody has entered into this guest room. That's what clean is. Did you know that? Get that in your uh, little ticker up there. What a guest sees with their eyes, smells with their nose, hears with their ears, knows on the inside of their knower. What they perceive by all these signals they receive when they first open that door and enter in. Man, this antenna goes on. This radar comes on and they start perceiving things about what they're paying for. It's all about what they're paying for. And perception is greater than reality. Perception is greater than reality. Now you and I know that there has been a, a, a guest room attendant in there, maybe a houseman in there, maybe a maintenance man in there, maybe a carpet tech or floor tech in there, maybe a supervisor in there, maybe the executive housekeeper has been in there and we all know that countless thousands of people have entered into this room, but we can achieve a state of existence in the room where there is no evidence that anybody has ever entered into the room. It's done by three simple things. Pay attention to one, two, three very simple things so you can remove evidence that anybody has been in the room. Here we go. The three things that you have to pay attention to that you might not think ever even matter. We must pay attention to zero smell. Zero smell. Zero smell. No smell. Can't smell anything. Can't smell cleaning chemicals. Cannot smell smell perfumes lofting in the air. That's why housekeepers don't wear perfume to work every day because as you perspire, you emit, you exfoliate, you share with the room this fragrance. Anything that can be smelled is airborne. You will not fix it by spraying <laughs> and wiping. You will not fix smell by putting deodorizer all over the carpet. Dear God, never put, I love my carpet on your carpet. Never use dry carpet cleaners, never ever. Never use anything in the room that produces or brings its own fragrance. Never do this. You must have zero smell. Yes, but sometimes the rooms smell bad, so we, we spray a deodorizer. What's in your deodorizer? Perfume, you will not have zero smell. Let me talk about deodorizers. Most people use something from one of these uh, lame ass chemical companies that smells like apples or citrus, orange or lemon. Smells like lavender. Oh, we use Freebreeze, cause it removes smell. Honey, Freebreeze smells like beautiful fresh linens. Why? Because it has a fragrance in it. It has a perfume in it. You will biologically, biologically stain everything in your room that has fabric on it by using any deodorizer with a fragrance in it. So we have zero smell, what's the next one? The next one is straight. Everything must be perfectly straight in the room. There can be nothing that is crooked. Everything must be straight. Nothing can be crooked. Tables cannot be crooked. TV on the wall cannot be leaned out crooked. Push it up flat so it's all straight. Chest of drawers, straight. Everything centered in the room. Artwork, perfectly centered 
over you know, couch. Everything in the room is centered and straight. Nothing's cattywampus or just a little bit. <laughs> you have magazines on your coffee table. Fan them out, make them perfectly straight. Same distance from the edge here, same distance from the edge here. No smell, zero smell, and straight and centered. Everything's straight and centered. I might spend two or three weeks going into hotel rooms telling my housekeepers in the morning, I'll be on the floors today. I'll be out in the bungalows at the resort. And I'm gonna check one thing, that all of the artwork is centered up exactly underneath the couch. Because over time, after you do the carpets, couch gets moved this way, the, 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 the TV uh, coffee table gets a little bit out this way. We get in the habit of not having a habit and things get crooked. Before you know it, you go in and everything is like eh, 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 eh. straight, square, centered. Everything symmetrical. Cushions on the couch, symmetrically, in the same position, same distance from the edge. You don't have one kind of laying down. Straight. Zero smell, straight. That's two. What's number three? Number three of the three biggies. No smell, everything straight. Number three, nothing missing. Every amenity expected in the room. You can't miss, you know, having a one washcloth that you need that makes up your set. You can't be short a washcloth. You can't be missing a cushion. You can't be missing lotion or shampoo. You can't be missing the tray that the amenities go on. You can't be missing a, oh, by the way, back to straight. Lampshades, seams in the back. Turn that thing around or the seam is in the back so the guests cannot see it. If they can see the seam anywhere in front, it's perceived as dirty. Okay, back to to missing, nothing missing. You can't be missing do not disturb sign. Do you realize if you're missing a do not disturb sign, the guest perceives the room to be what? Dirty. Well, I don't believe that, Brother Abel. I just uh, bless God forever. I don't believe that just because it's missing a, a do not disturb sign, the guest is gonna think the room is dirty. Well, once you start taking that perception serious and realize that truly is, the microscopic perception that flashes like a flash of lightning within them the second they realize they don't have a do not disturb sign, this room is not clean. They don't think like you think. They think like they think. And a guest doesn't know what he's looking at, but he sees it. You cannot be missing the iron. You cannot be missing the ironing board. You cannot be missing the ironing board cover. You cannot be missing silverware or glassware up in your cabinets if you have that. You cannot be missing a mini bar if all your rooms have mini bar. Cannot be missing anything. Let's see, am I missing anything? When something is missing, it's an insult. If you have a light bulb out on a bedside table, this is an insult. Well, I don't think it's really an insult, Brother Abel. Yeah, well, when you start realizing that it is an insult and start treating such a condition in the room as an insult to the guest, oh, you will, you, you, you're, oh, you're gonna do better as an executive housekeeper, baby. These things are insults. For a room to smell is an insult. For magazines to be a little crooked, TV remote crooked, DVD remote just a, you know, a little crooked, it's an insult. For the TV remote to be missing, an insult. For a bedside lamp to be out, an insult. Missing glassware, silverware, insult. Oh, the towels are beautiful. We fold them to look like swans but we're missing a washcloth, perceived dirty and an insult at the same time. Oh my God, it just gets worse and worse. Have you got a combination <laughs> of missing and, uh, oh my God. And the room smells like uh, apples. Uh, all right, let me talk about smell. Every animal on the planet is guided by their nose. You are guided by your nose. You may or may not realize this. The guest hugely depends on the nose and the little fragrances and essences and slight, uh, you know, nasal details that they pick up. They're running that nose from the time they get into that hotel. Guests do not want something that has a fragrance or a smell. Let me tell you, the second that they open the door, I guarantee you the first thing they do is, so the second that they smell something, anything, you can smell the rubber belt from a vacuum cleaner that was run an hour ago. Anything. You can smell the perfume of the, of the supervisor that inspected the room. Any smell whatsoever they're going to pick up. And as soon as they pick up smell, boom, a little laptop is going to open up in their mind. And it's going to start digga, 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 typing out data and information because they have a smell. They have no idea why there would be a smell because they're not expecting it. They're expecting zero smell. Zero smell is clean. So their mind doesn't know what it is. So immediately the mind starts wondering, what is that? 
What is that? And nothing on that little list, on that little laptop that pops up in their head, that starts printing out possible solutions or answers as to what the smell is, none of them are gonna be good for you. Because what you smell when you go in the room is apples or cinnamon, why? I know we use apple or cinnamon deodorizer. You know what the smell is, so you don't have this problem because you don't act like a guest because you're not a guest. The guest smells something, they want to know what is that, and nothing that comes up in their mind as a solution to the answer is going to be good for you. To them, apples, oh, that smells like dirty feet. This room smells like dirty feet. Anytime you hear the word musty, the room smells musty. That's mildew or moisture, easy to get rid of. Nonetheless, they're going to say it smells like vomit. I've gone into to, to rooms early in the morning after a guest has checked out at seven or eight o'clock, you can still smell their bad breath. Anything that you can smell is airborne. You will not fix it by spraying deodorizer on the carpet or on the furniture or on the, you know, the, the tables and chairs and all that. Now I'm gonna do a whole video on how to get to zero smell. I'm just pointing out now that these three things, zero smell, everything straight and nothing missing, are the three things that don't have anything to do with a maid's cart and cleaning supplies and inspection or anything. They have everything to do with perceptions. And if you're not in tune with that, you're gonna be a lousy executive housekeeper. You're gonna be called down to the GM's office time and time again, wonder why we're giving away discounts at the front desk because the rooms stink, because the rooms are dirty. You know what happens if the light switch doesn't work? First, it's an insult. Secondly, it's thrown into the category of clean. When the guest fills out the comment card and they say, they say uh, was the room clean upon entering, they're gonna say no. And you watch some of the stuff they write as, a, as a, an example. No, the light switch didn't work. That's how I learned this, by reading every single comment card that came through the hotel. If it doesn't work, if it's not straight, if it's missing, it's perceived as dirty. That's the only thing that they care about is a clean room. So everything is lumped in under the umbrella of clean. Wow, I wish they'd have told me that my first day as an executive housekeeper when I was a little boy, little bit tiny boy, little bit tiny executive housekeeper. They did not, I had to discover it. All right, put up the picture. You see this room, what's wrong with it? There's evidence that somebody else has been in the room. Where is it, do you see it? That's right, the stools, look at the bar stools. See how one is crooked? That means somebody else has been in here. Those things should be symmetrical, centered up at the bar, sitting all tall and pretty, nice and straight, corners together, exactly symmetrical, beautiful. But you have one there just turned just a little. Well, who was in here? Who sat on the stool? This all goes through the guest mind. This is all shaping, crafting, and molding their perceptions of things. Okay, put up the next one. Silverware in a drawer. Most hotels, certainly suites, luxury condos and stuff, they have kitchens now. It's just a big feature, people like it. Look at the silverware caddy. See how it's to the side and moved up into the drawer? It's not centered. It's got everything it needs, but it's not centered. All right, now put up the um, picture of the silverware that are in the silverware caddy correctly. All right, there you go, look at it. See, nice and straight, centered up immediately. Wow, this is clean. Here's why straight is so important, because when something is crooked, it flashes through the guest's mind and perceptions and they think they didn't attend to this. Somebody didn't pay attention. And when you've got TV crooked, TV remote crooked, coffee table crooked, pillows crooked, it doesn't look like the room was finished and they don't know how to put it into words. It's not their job. All they know is this room's not clean. It's just not as clean as it was before. It wasn't as clean as that hotel that cost less down the road. So the silverware has to be straight in the caddy, in the drawer. So when they pull stuff out of the drawer, everything is lined up like little soldiers, salute, Standing at attention, straight, everything straight. You have to pay attention to these optics. These are optics. They see these things and it happens that fast. It changes their perception of things. And this is a type of show business hotel, resort. This is a form of entertainment. And a show has to have its details in order and it has to be right. You can't have all of the people on stage in a costume and then have one character you know, wearing Levi's. <laughs> Right? 
It's an optic that's off. Why is he wearing, why is everybody else wearing cowboy boots in this little cowboy play? This guy's wearing tennis shoes. What is that? What an insult. They didn't pay attention to get everybody in costume. It's an insult because we want to enter into this fantasy world when we come into a hotel. We want to be treated in a way that makes us feel like we have made it. Oh my God, look how they're treating us. Look, I have finally come to a place in life where I'm treated like this, like I deserve to be treated. That's all going on in the guest. And if you ever forget that, well, go down, go down there and work out for motel number four, or super 12 or blue roof or one of these like, you know, these guys. Do you want work at my hotel? And these things don't cost any money. Keeping things straight doesn't cost money. You don't buy a chemical for that. You can have a room that has carpet that's not clean. You can have a room that has dust on, you know, the artwork or top of TV or these things, right? A little bit of dust, you can have that. It's not exactly clean as we know it, but you can have carpets that's old and worn out, furniture that's worn out. You can, you can shine an old penny, that's what I'm saying. But you will get the guest to believe it is cleaner than it is by having things, having no smell, by having everything straight and by missing no amenity. You can't have the cord hanging down from the iron and the iron organizer in the closet. That thing's gotta be wrapped up, boop, bundled up and tucked into that little iron organizer. Straight, looking good, baby. Military style, you know, detail. And it's easy. Fix these three things and you will do so much more for your hotel. And where does all this matter? In the occupied room more than it matters in the vacant clean room that the guest enters into. That's what a housekeeper is, you see. People think a housekeeper cleans a dirty room and gets it ready and clean, you know? So when the guest comes in, oh, they like it, oh, they like it. No, that's not what a housekeeper is. A housekeeper sets up all the amenities in the room sets up the standard for cleanliness in the room, that's when they make the house. When they go into an occupied room, that's when they keep the house and all the amenities are put back where they belong, straight. Ironing board goes back in the closet on the ironing board hanger, so does the iron and the, all the water's poured out of it. It's dried off, cleaned up. The housekeeper says, well, the guest wants it out because he put it out in the morning. No, he doesn't want it out. She doesn't want it out. Everybody puts their ironing board out in the morning before they go to work and irons their shirt because they need to. When they come home, they're tired. Oh my God, I'm just gonna leave the iron and the ironing board out. I'm too tired to put it up. But in a hotel, we made a house, they mess it all up, we go in the occupied room, we put all the things that belong to the hotel back in their proper place and straight and clean. All of the amenities and the standards of the room are corrected back to their proper placement. That's house keeping. In the dirty room, we make the house for the next guest. When they come into the room, each day they're there spending their money, we're going to keep the house. We're gonna put everything back where, where it belongs. So we make the house when it's dirty. We keep the house when the guest is occupying the room. We go back in and put everything where it needs to be because it gives the perception that we've cleaned the room again. All we did was straighten up magazines, straighten up the TV, remote back where it goes, ironing board up, towels back to where they should go and proper standard. Oh yeah, we moved their stuff to put our stuff back where it belongs. Oh, but we shouldn't touch. Oh, we touch. They expect us to touch. Did you know that? They do. And if you don't touch their stuff and straighten up your stuff, it's an insult to the guest. Why? I pay for housekeeping. They didn't clean my room. Everything's just as crooked as it was when I left today. Occupied rooms, more important than anything. We make a room when it's dirty, we make it up for the guests. And then while they're in there, we keep the house that we made. And we look after three things. Zero smell, everything straight, and nothing missing. Finally, I'm going to tell you why this is all so important. No smell, everything straight, nothing missing. See, that's not even, that's not vacuuming, spraying, wiping. It's none of that. It's no deodorizers, no chemicals. And don't worry, I'm going to do a video on how to get zero smell. I'm just telling you now that it's important. But I'm not telling you everything you need to know about how to get there. I'm just teaching you how the perceptions of the guest works. What does this do for your hotel? This generates repeat business. Oh yes, it does. People see housekeeping as the biggest labor expense, the, busy, the biggest, uh, you know, supply expense. They see housekeeping as the biggest expense department, which is why they're always encouraging you to cut hours and cut expenses and see if you can get by without this and that. It's stupid, it's crazy, it's foolish. To, oh my God, don't work for a property that doesn't care about their product. When rooms are clean, 
And when you keep the house that you made in an occupied room every day, all amenities, all possessions or assets owned by the hotel go back to where they belong. That means you move their stuff if it's in a way, in the way. Oh, listen, I've been doing this for years. Not once has anybody complained because the amenities were put back. They get it. Oh, they get it. You produce repeat guests. Why? For what I paid, the room was clean. It didn't smell. Everything was straight. And there was nothing missing. Those three things. As your repeat business grows, in other words, people check out. Next time they make a reservation, they make it with you. They don't go try another hotel. You build your repeat business. And as repeat business fills your house month by month, incrementally more and more, as you get momentum with this strategy and housekeeping, no smell, everything straight nothing missing and they will return and you will build momentum vis-a-vis -vis housekeeping. You'll help the resort or the hotel build momentum toward more repeat guests. Remember, you're the first and the last hands to touch the product that is sold to the general public. I'm telling you that the, the dividends this pays off are amazing. When you get there and this is your program, Repeat business fills the house more and more. Once the base of the house is filled, then this, all these other rooms that we need to sell for the first time become less. It's easier on the sales department. Not only that, the base or the repeat guest fills up your ADR and your, and your RevPAR. RevPAR more important than ADR because RevPAR associates money for rooms that were not sold, and we can get into all that later. All right, now you can raise the rates on the guests that are there for the first time, but it's worth it. Why? Because they're going to go into a room that has zero smell, everything is straight, and nothing is missing. And you hit those three bases, they will come back for that time and time again. They will come back for that. Now housekeeping is generating the business. Now housekeeping is on the cutting edge of revenue management. Okay, there you got it. Remember, no smell, everything straight, nothing missing. I mean, everything has to be straight and in its place and nothing missing. See how awkward that was when I was missing? Okay, there you go. Go and do your job. The hotel and hospitality industry is a type of entertainment and a form of show business. Thanks for visiting the Executive Housekeeper 101 with Abel Josephson from housekeepingrehab.com.